All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. This is an update episode. We actually just got some news that dropped about Lonzo Ball's knee that I want to update you guys on. I didn't want to wait till tomorrow's episode. We also are going to get into a conversation about DeAndre Ayton. Um, I know that's a target that a lot of Bulls fans have brought up, and I know because of the quote uh, that came out about, you know, it'd be, it's something internal that of the reason why he only played 17 minutes, that it's really stirred up those conversations on if the Bulls can realistically put a trade together or, pro- or possibly pursue DeAndre Ayton. I'm going to talk about that. I don't know if it's going to be the way that some of you guys want, but we're going to get into that right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, thank you for joining us over here at Chicago Bulls Central. And the first one from the Catman, we got an update on Lonzo Ball's knee. So there apparently has not been any progress made with Lonzo Ball's knee. Has not gotten any better. Every time that they try to ramp him up, he's still feeling pain. And that is concerning the Chicago Bulls front office, rightfully so. At this point in time, Lonzo Ball's original timetable for return after going out, uh, getting surgery on January 8th, was March 25th. We are now double that eight-week timetable since Lonzo Ball's injury, and he's still experiencing pain. Now, we know he had the bone bruise on top of the surgery, things like that, that that hampered him, but some serious concern growing around Lonzo Ball's knee. Now, the Catman, while not a huge insider or a huge place for breaking news, he has broken some Bulls news in the past. He was one of the first to talk about them trading Laurie Marketing as much as other deals as well. Um, he he, you know, he does this professionally, so it's not like he's just anyone uh, out there, but It does raise a bunch of concern for Bulls fans. One of the things that we've talked about very much over this offseason is the knees of our backcourt. Now, while Zach Levine's scope procedure was pretty much what we expected to relieve some of that pain, not anything lingering, not nothing major, with Lonzo Ball's knee, it's not the same. And the fact that we are now this far away from that surgery that happened January 28th, and he's still experiencing pain when they try to ramp him up, it raises a lot of questions. It raises a lot of questions and concerns. And the fact that the front office is concerned about that, how does this possibly change what this Bulls front office does um, in the offseason? If at all, they may look at Io. They may see Io develop hugely over the course of the summer and think, hey, listen, if, this, if Lonzo Ball for some reason can't go, if he's going to be hampered, we still have Io here, our second-round pick who more than overachieved last year. Um but they still, even if that's the case, may have to make another deal then to replace Io on the bench. There's so many things, and I don't want to act or act as if, you know, maybe the biggest concern is right now that Lonzo may miss time next season. There's still a lot, a lot of time before we even get into training camp next season. And one would hope that Lonzo Ball is able to get back on track by then. But if not, it like whatever's going on with Lonzo's knee is hugely concerning. And I'm glad that the front office is concerned about it. And, you know, and it's scary that we haven't got any updates. Let me know what you guys feel about it down below. Let me know if this if this uh, update, so to so, I guess it's not really update. It's just saying that we're still where we left off with at the end of the season. How concerning is this for you? I am a, When Lonzo Ball was on the court this season, he was everything that we needed him to be and everything that he was advertised to be, more so in some situations. We know even at that time where Zach Levine was out with COVID, Lonzo Ball going on that 18-8-6 and six stretch where he just looked like the elite point guard that we know that he can be. But at the end of the day, the, be- the best ability is availability. And with that being said, if Lonzo is going to not be available or if we're going to have these serious injury concerns, it really does raise some questions on what the long-term outlook for Lonzo Ball is. Now, again, this all could go away. We can hear in a couple of weeks that Lon- the bone bruise is gone. Lonzo's back working out. He's going to be on track to be in training camp. All this can change very, very fast. So I don't want to cause a huge amount for alarm. But I do want to honestly talk about it and because, hey, we don't know what's going on here. Now, the fact that this has gone on as long as what it has is crazy. And I know there are going to be a lot of people in the comments, well, Lonzo was only played, well, the season he played 65 games, it was almost 90% of the games available that season. So let's be clear, that was a shortened season. But Lonzo is a player who's missed a lot of time over his career. So what does that mean for Lonzo Ball's learn, long-term knee health? It's all seriously concerning, but I want to hear from you guys down below on what you feel about it. But to make this and to carry on something that I didn't actually talk about, in this morning's episode that you guys have brought up in the comments is DeAndre Ayton. 
And I know Bulls fans are looking for upgraded center. I, I know that this is something that a lot of Bulls fans, this is almost their, their main concern that they want to see the Bulls do is replace Nikola Vucevic with a different starting center. Now, DeAndre Ayton, with the comments that came out from the Suns, with them only playing 17 minutes, with it, them questioning if he's going to get be worth giving that max to. Um, is DeAndre Ayton available? I would say that more than likely you probably are listening to deals for him for sure. But the question is, can the Bulls realistically put a deal together for DeAndre Ayton? Now, first, I do want to talk about DeAndre Ayton's stats, which is raw numbers, are, are right there with Nikola Vucevic's with higher efficiency and a lower usage rating. So what that would say is that, that DeAndre Ayton should theoretically slot in, especially as being the third option, very well for the Chicago Bulls. If that were to happen, if somehow a deal were to be made, how DeAndre Ayton's fit on this team looks at as far as the offensive side of things, looks to be okay. He's not nearly the passer that Vooch is, not at all. But it looks like, okay, there's, there's definitely some things. The defense is considerably better. He had a defensive rating of 105.1, I think, which is over 10 points better than, um, than what Nikola Vucevic put up. So the defensive upgrade is right there. And we know one of the biggest things that I talk about is that bringing in somebody who, do, who does what Nikola Vucevic doesn't do, it's easy on paper to bring that, but we need somebody who also can bring some of that offensive to just keep the offense flowing, spacing, things like that going. Does DeAndre Ayton bring all of that? No, but he brings enough on the offensive side to where you can say, hey, we can see this working while also improving the defense. Not being the the lockdown amazing defensive center or anything like that, but bringing enough of an improvement defensively that it could definitely help the Chicago Bulls. But the question is, is can the Bulls realistically put a deal together for the Chicago Bulls? And anybody who's in the comments getting ready to type right now, Vooch and Kobe get it done. It do, that's not going to be enough. If the Suns do decide to move on from DeAndre Ayton, they can easily get one, if not a couple of first round picks on top of a solid talent. Uh, uh, going forward. So the, the whole just throwing away some of the pieces that we don't want to bring in eight, and that's not going to work no matter how the contracts work. Now, would Nikola Vucevic be a starter in the, a trade package? I think absolutely. Could Kobe White be a thrown in that? Absolutely. But guess what? We're going to have to give up something that we like and want on this team for that to move forward. Patrick Williams is not going to happen. This front office is not trading Patrick Williams. So that's right there a non-starter. So I want to. I'm going to task you guys. I want to hear from you guys in the comments. I'll put. I'll pull the, the some of the best ones, and we'll talk about it. Or maybe no. Well next ne tomorrow's episode is going to be a interview. We actually have a guest, so I'm not going to be able to get right into it then. So maybe on the next uh, episode that I'm solo on, we'll we'll hop in and, and talk about some of the other things, uh, some of your guys' trade ideas. But I do want to hear from you guys on what are some realistic trade ideas. Now keep in mind, one of the things I'm looking for in these trade ideas. Is the Bulls do are going to have to give up a piece that we like? So whether that uh, Demar, I don't think is going to be, whether it's Io, maybe it is Io to Sumo. Maybe the 18th pick alone gets it done. I don't think so. Um, maybe they take a look and say we can do a double sign and trade. Maybe they think that Derrick Jones Jr. can bring them some things as well as Vooch and Kobe. I still don't think that that's going to be enough. That is the biggest question because I'll tell you guys admittedly, Io to Sumo. Being thrown in that deal, especially because his contract's low, but especially because of Chris Paul's age, the Suns may look at it and say, hey, Ayo DeSumo is a player that we look and we can groom and we feel can be a starting point guard next to Devin Booker long term. If you guys want Aiton, that's what gets the deal, that's what gets the deal done. Is that something that you guys will be interested in? We know Bulls fans, hey, we know we love Ayo. I want to see, let me be clear here. I want to see Ayo on this team for a long term, long, long time. But the Bulls, again, if we're talking about getting as close to championship contention, if we're talking about improving that starter center spot, for those that are interested in Aiton, it can't just, it's not going to just be the pieces that we don't like. It's not just going to be Kobe, Vooch, Javante, which we all love Javante, but I just threw that in there, that get that deal done. It's going to take maybe an Iowa to sue. Maybe it takes an Alice Caruso. So that, that money, I don't know how that works out again. This is something that I'm throwing at you guys. But what would you guys be willing to give up if it came to DeAndre Ayton being available and the Bulls just needing that little bit to get over the hump to compare to what other teams give? Again, the Bulls not having many first-round draft picks in the next handful of years to trade is going to hurt. And even then, with the Bulls having the 18th overall pick, they can only trade it during the draft, right? 
They can't trade it before, which, again, you can't really make moves before, but it is something that they can do. Kobe, Io, Vooch, they're all under contract now. So those are all deals that can be moved at the, in, at the NBA draft. Now, technically, the Bulls would be drafting that pick, but then they'll be making a deal for it later. That's why they're able to have some flexibility with that 18th overall pick in this NBA draft. But I want to hear from you guys on this one. It's going to be big. Let me know realistic deals that you think would get it done and that it, you would be interested in if it came into getting Aiton on this team. If you're somebody also who takes a look and says, no, I don't want Aiton on this team, I want to hear from you guys as well. Uh, but yeah, that was just to flesh this out, make this a little bit more of a fuller episode for you guys. Let me know what you guys think about everything down below. I want to hear from you guys on all of this, everything we talked about in this bonus episode of today. But this has been Chicago Bulls Central. Thank you for supporting the show. You can follow the show at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform that we're on. You can also send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave us a text and or voicemail about this topic or any other topic, draft is coming up. Once the draft lottery happens, by the way, guys, that's when I will start my NBA draft prospect coverage and prospects for the for the Chicago Bulls specifically, which I'm putting a lot of work into. And it all may be for not because the Bulls may trade the pick. But nonetheless, uh, I'll be putting in that work for you guys. But you can let me know anything about this offseason at that number, 773-270-2799. That's it for me for today. Like I like to end everything on. See red, don't be red. Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. Media.